Well, hello, Tool and Die guys. It's Phil Kerner, the Tool and Die guy. And uh, tonight we're going to go into uh, a really nice uh, piece of equipment to uh, have to check your work. And uh, the Sterrett Multi Anvil Micrometers. And uh, this is what they look like the Sterrett number 220 Multi Anvil Micrometers. Um, I should tell you, uh, and I would expect a lot of my older seasoned. Uh, uh, people watching this stuff. Uh, the reason guys like us have so many tools uh, wasn't because we got them all from our parents, right? I have a few things from my brother and my dad, but you know, I bought most of my stuff. But back in those days, especially if you worked in a non-union tool and die shop at Erie PA, um, there was no inspection department, all right? You were your own inspection department, and, and you were expected to do good work and check it yourself. And once you borrowed something about two or three times from another toolmaker, they were kind of like, okay, pal, time to buy your own. So that's what we did, all right? That's why I have so many things. So let's take a look at my particular set. Well, these are from the uh, probably about 1963, and these were passed on to me by my brother, Fred. Um, he went into management in 1979 and uh, gave me his toolbox. And... He wasn't a. He was a. He finished his apprenticeship as a tool and die maker, but he never um, uh, really. He didn't build a lot of molds himself. He was an EDM specialist, which back in 1963, four or five, was a big deal. EDM was the cutting thing, right? So, anyways, Fred gave me these, and you know, I love this uh, beautiful case they came in, right, with the velvet. Those were the days. So, uh, if we take a closer look at them, so here's your anvil. Right, that's what they like to call this, the multi-anvil. So uh, the picture in the catalog doesn't tell the whole story. That's what I'm here to do. So what do we use these things for? Well, I use them three different ways. So, uh, of course, if we go to something like this, got this little um, undercut, and I want to know how thick that head is. Uh, it's Especially with this chamfer on here, I really can't get my normal mics into that groove and measure across here. But if I take my uh, anvil mics, they fit in there. All right. So it's really great. Number one for checking small features like that, where you can't uh, get your, the head of your um, normal mics. Okay. They're a little thicker down here. Right. And then we go to uh, here. We eliminate that whole, head here it's been extended out for you to grab something so number one that's a really good usage so let's move along here did i do a duplicate slide i might have okay so next up oh we can take them apart and take the anvil out okay the anvil and we can put in a dowel pin and you can put an eighth inch dowel pin in there you can put a quarter inch dowel pin in there you can put a 5 16 dowel pin in there and they'll all measure zero okay because the v is on this side and it always pushes it up against this part of the anvil so what's that really good for well, let's take a look at that uh that's another picture of a, a little larger pin in there that still reads zero okay so that's that, that's such a cool feature. Now, here's what I use them for. That in this setup, I want to measure the edge of this hole to this side wall here, this the this straight wall. That's the way you do it. You have to have a, something round on the inside and something flat on the outside. Or you could actually have two rounds if you really want to be, uh, you know, into it. But on the inside wall, you have to have something round to pick that up. So I actually did a little sketch for you guys. Now, I want, I want to let everybody know, I know I have a lot of seasoned guys that are following me. I get that. But I record a lot of this stuff with the hopes of new people uh, who are subscribing, don't have any idea what multi-mics are, what they're used for. Um, so I have to, I, I talk to them too, all right? So here's why you can't use regular micrometers to do that. See this? If I use a pair of regular micrometers... I'm going to have a gap here, okay? That blue gap, 
I'm missing some some area here because the flats are hitting here. If I use the pin in the middle, I get an accurate dimension across here. So it can be flat on the outside, but whatever you're using on this in the middle has to have a radius on it to get an accurate dimension. So that's what I use them for. Now, finally, uh, let's take them all apart. And we have one third, uh, a, a third use for these. And this showed up in my video the other night. The most debated video I've ever done on that damn fixture with the D-shaped holes. Um, nice way to just throw this in your machine and do a double check. You know, they're small. You don't have to bring a height gauge in. I mean, there's a thousand ways you could do this, but it's such a convenient way, right? So these things have paid for themselves, obviously, a million times over. Now, for those of you guys who uh, may be new here uh, or maybe have been following me for a while, You've probably heard me mention my brother, Fred, a couple times. Uh, this is my brother, Fred. Uh, Freddie Kerner, uh, good-looking kid back in 1963. That's his graduation picture from Cathedral Prep. That's one of the pictures at the end of his, towards the end of his life. Uh, Freddie passed away about nine years ago. Um, I didn't really get to work with Fred. He was 16, 17 years older than me. But when he retired, or not retired, he went to management. As I said, he gave me his toolbox. But I have talked to people that work with Fred and I was told that Fred was a little bit anal, and which is a good thing. You're a toolmaker, whatever. Uh, but uh, I, I like the best comment I ever heard about. He, they said, your brother could uh, pick fly turds out of pepper. Never heard that one before. You got a new one tonight. For those of you, again, who are new here, and you want to know about who's teaching you, uh, my name is Phil Kerner. I'm kind of all over the Internet with a lot of stuff. But just check out this photo gallery on my page. You'll see my uncle's shop. That was kind of the family thing. And then you'll see uh, there's two galleries, Kerner Tool and Die 1. And then Kerner Tool and Die 2 is mine. And uh, just so you know who's teaching you, you know, uh, this past year I've been on CNN, the China Global Television Network, Bloomberg, big channel in Australia. So um, the guy who's teaching you is a very credible person, I, I have to say regarding the media coverage you know my there's so many shops in pennsylvania that have like a, a billion dollars in sales a year and when all these people from all these networks research manufacturing people in pennsylvania about the election I, i'm the one that popped up so that's very funny to me maybe not to you so hey again check out the photo gallery and of course if you're interested in maybe becoming a member there's like 400 other videos over there and uh, you might say well phil why don't you just Throw them on YouTube for free. And I've released some of them. They don't go anywhere. There's something YouTube knows in that algorithm that uh, uh, they, they like fresh stuff. So this is my life project for this trade, the trade I love. Uh, 15 years I've been doing this now. All right. So if you're interested, I, I cut the membership in half tonight. So 47 bucks, you're paying, you know, I don't know. You do, you do the math. 400 videos. So um, that's it. And again, I'm not here to sell memberships. I just wanted to let you know there's a lot more stuff over there. It's half price. and the, But the biggest thing I'd like you to do is check out the photo gallery so you know who's teaching you. Okay. And again, I am Phil Kerner, the tool and die guy. Hope you found that informative. Uh, hopefully there won't be quite as many comments as there were on that damn fixture. But if there are, I'll answer them. Okay. We'll see you on the next video.